All right, welcome back. Um, just want to talk a little bit about intellectual and physical properties and a little bit about the difference. Um, I want you to know what a rivalrous good is. So basically, the consumption of a rivalrous good present, prevents the other from consuming that same good. So a good example of this would be a piece of pizza. You eat a piece of pizza, I cannot eat that piece of pizza. I can eat another slice of that pizza, right? Uh, this is my drywall plunge saw, right? You can buy a drywall plunge saw like it, um, but you can't buy this exact plunge saw. This one's mine, you know what I'm saying? My consumption, when I bought it, it meant that you cannot buy this. You can buy a copy of it. That's what a rivalrous good is, right? It just means that your consumption prevents another from consuming it, just like a book or a DVD or a vinyl record or, or anything like that, right? You you buying it means someone else cannot buy it. They can buy a different copy of it. Okay, um, a non-rivalrous good is basically your consumption doesn't prevent someone else from consuming it. So really, I think the easiest way to think about it is something like this, right? Um, when you buy a Blu-ray, right, it's a rivalrous good. No one else can buy that rivalrous good. But everybody can stream it at once on Netflix. Everybody can stream a song on Netflix, right? And everybody could download the same torrent file of, of a movie and we could all consume a copy of it. So what a non-rivalist good just basically means is that one person's consumption of the good does not necessarily inhibit another person from consuming it. So I think, you know, you can think about MP3s as non-rivalist goods, any streaming, media as non-rivalrous, a PDF as non-rivalrous, a .mov file, non-rivalrous, basically all digital technologies um, or ways that we consume things digitally are non-rivalrous goods, okay? And this is just really, 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 um, really, really important, okay? Because, you know, an idea, like I said, it's a meme, it's fire, it's light, it's, 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 it's really a non-rivalrous good. By nature, an idea is non-rivalrous, okay? But how do you make it have the qualities of something that's rivalrous, right? Is you, you make it artificially scarce using intellectual property laws. That's just basically um, what you do. And we consume, you know, um, ideas in the form of both rivalrous goods, books, uh, movies, uh, game cartridges, etc., and via non-rivalrous goods, streaming platforms, digital copies, uh, etc. So that gives you uh, a little bit of just, you know, a, a, a kind of a concept here. But ideas in themselves really are more like non-rivalrous goods. And that's really, really important when we, th when we think about this. So just some questions, you know, um, what does it mean when an idea is more like something that's non-rivalrous, when it's like something that's like fire or, or light, okay? Um, and what does it mean when you have, you know, distribution platforms um, and media um, that are also non-rivalrous, like, uh, you know, Pandora or Spotify or Netflix or any, any you know, Disney Plus, okay? Um, and it's important to note, you know, that how do we take these non-rivalrous goods and give them the sort of um, qualities and scarcity of rivalrous goods is we protect them via intellectual property law that grants these rights that we've been talking about today. So that primes us. I want to just talk about a little bit from Lessig's book. Um, I think let's just start this off. Um, you know, listen, I know you're going to do some reading in this class. You may not do much. I know during the term, uh, you know, around week four or five, you know, we really stop giving a fuck. We just, just, you know, you know, just jump off the cliff of caring uh, when it comes to reading and viewings. But I know people do try early on. Just try to get through some of this text. This book's pretty, pretty easy to read, I think. Um, but a little bit from the introduction. He just presents all the peculiarities of remixing and how laws do not necessarily coincide with cultural practice, particularly laws that govern and protect um, the world of physical things, of, non, of rivalrous goods um, trying to protect 
the world of rival, rival risk, uh, non-rival risk goods, excuse me, um, of digital media that we, we exist in now. And he gives some, some of the you know, examples of nuances. So he talks about uh, DJ Girl Talk, who we'll see a um, you know, film on later this term. Um, you know, and you know his music. Uh, you know, each song he makes has 15 or 20 various sample components, and you know, he's sort of a poster boy for remixing. And you know, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, you know, but is his art illegal? Should his art be allowed? You know, um, is it good? Not only is it, it you know, it doesn't matter if it's good or, or bad or not, but people enjoy it, and should it be dis disallowed? Um, and it is, dis, you know, pretty much disallowed under current law. He talks about an example of, of a fan group that likes to um, basically uh, fans of Bob Marley, fans of Jimi Hendrix, fans of a lot of these um, iconic songwriters and artists would gather um, in various places in, around the world and they'd sing cover versions. And these are just fans. These are not artists. These are not you know, musicians, there are fans who would gather and for their entertainment, the people would sing, um, you know, songs by these artists. So, um, and it was a nonprofit thing. And so, um, uh, a group of people tried to do a bunch of John Lennon cover versions and Yoko Ono owns the rights to a lot of his catalog. And so, um, first they reached out and Yoko Ono said no. Then they reached out again and, and they demanded some exorbitant amount of money um, for this group, literally for a nonprofit m purpose to just, as fans, you know, sing some John Lennon songs. They ended up sort of doing it anyways, but it's just weird that, you know, here we live in this time when, um, when um, you know, that sort of thing is legal. Now, I want you to watch this video of the Prince Dancing Baby. Uh, video. It's 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 next in this this module. So uh, I'm going to come back in a second. I want you to watch this video and tell me why was this considered initially copyright infringement. 